Hi everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at resource filtering with RAD Schedule View. As a reminder, RAD Schedule View is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, we're going to do a quick overview of how we implement RAD Schedule View as well as how to create some sample resources to use. Then we'll go ahead and add a RAD combo box to provide some resource filtering functionality. And finally, we're going to tie everything together to make it all function and work within RAD Schedule View. So stepping into Visual Studio, you can see I've already taken care of some of the typing ahead of time, just so you don't have to see me rewrite everything, create some resources and appointments and all that jazz. Looking at our design surface, we can see we already have our RAD combo box, as well as RAD schedule view, that's displaying some resources with grouping array defined. Stepping through our example, we can see how this is actually all getting hooked up. First up, we can see there's a local namespace being defined, which allows us to reference our schedule view view model, which we'll be taking a look at in a moment. That has the key of XVM, which we set as the data context to our layout root grid, enabling every control within that grid to access properties from our view model. Scrolling down a little bit further to RAD schedule view, we can see our appointment source and resource type source are both coming from bindings through the view model. So we have everything that's being defined right there. Our view definitions allow us to see day, week, and month views. And finally, the group description is going by resource type location, and we're going to show the null group. Stepping into our view model, we can see that we set observable collections for appointment, resource type, and resource, appropriately named appointments, resource types, and combo resources. We also have a selected resource, which does notify property change to ensure the UI updates whenever the value is changing. Once this view model is instantiated, we'll go ahead and make some appointments, which we can see we're doing a simple iterator to make 10 new appointments and add them to schedule view. And we also go ahead and make resources, which if we scroll down, we new up that resource type collection, we add a new resource type for location, and we add our halls A, B, and C. So this is everything we need to get up to this point. Now we want to add some new functionality to get closer to enabling filtering with RAD Schedule View. So the first thing we'll want to do is actually utilize this one collection we saw up here, Combo Resources. So we can new that up right here. New Observable Collection. Now Combo Resources, we want to go ahead and add some resources to it. new resource and we'll say we'll go ahead and make this speakers so we'll say enchev and the type will be speaker we can copy this to milev and donchev so we now have three speaker resources but of course that as we saw up here we're going to need a resource type for so we'll skip right up here and said say resource type new RT equals new resource type and for this we're going to call it speaker just so everything lines up nicely now we can go ahead down below once our resources are defined and say new RT dot resources dot add range and we can use combo resources for this so we can very quickly add these and last but certainly not least resource types add new RT this means if I go ahead and start this project up right now, we'll step into an appointment and we'll actually get to see that both of these resource types are available within RAD Schedule View. However, we're only still grouping by the location. So as we scroll down and find appointment to select, and we can see both location and speaker are available to our appointments. But like I said, we're only grouping by location. So we still don't know, even if we move these appointments around, what speaker is being assigned. We can go ahead and fix that in the next step. Now, since we've gone ahead and defined this combo resources, we can go ahead and make this the item source for our RAD combo box. Go back to our design view, scroll up a little bit till we find our combo box, and here we can say the item source is going to be binding the combo resources. We also want to set our selected item. binding. Now if you remember, and again this is a nice way to keep type safety going, go ahead and just copy and paste this name into our XAML so there's no confusion over what we're doing. Which means that we now have a combo box that's actually being bound to the resources we're using for the speakers. So we're kind of sharing that collection between the two to ensure that this combo box has the same values that we have selectable as resources for speaker. But the trick here is that right now nothing is actually filtering. So this is where we step into our view model and add some filtering logic. 
we can go ahead and minimize some of these other methods since we're not going to need them anymore. The first thing we want to add is a new predicate of I appointment. So public predicate I appointment, since all our appointments are based on I appointment, and call this filter value. Now within filter value, all we want to do is have a simple getter, and we're returning a new filter property, if I spell it right, filter property that we're about to define. Now filter is going to be a public bool filter that takes I appointment, call it APPT, make it nice and easy. Now since we know we're using these standard appointments from RAS Schedule View, we can say appointment app equals APPT as appointment, and we want to return app not equals null because we don't want to have nothing being returned here. And we also need to add a new method, which is going to be filter by speaker. Of course, you can name this anything you want to, but I'm choosing to name it appropriate to the resources that I'm using, which now means we need to make public bool filter by speaker. This is going to be appointment PPT. And for this, we want to return that selected value, or rather selected resource, equals null, or appointment resources contains the selected resource. Now, there's one more change we need to make here in the code. Since we're updating filter value when we update our selected resource, or rather that's the intended end result, when we update selected resource, we also want to do on property change this dot filter value. And of course this filter value still isn't being bound to anything on our view. So we'll switch back to XAML, go back to our day view definition since that's the one we'll be working in, and say appointment filter. Appointment filter is binding to filter value. Which means when we go ahead and run this, we're able to actually have some live filtering going on within RAD schedule view. And now that everything's loaded up, we'll go ahead and scroll down, see we have some appointments we can go and move these into our respective halls and we know that resource is going to be updated make this visible but now we also want to go into our appointments and select speakers so we'll say this one is Enchev this one will be Milev we have Donchev over here and we'll do another Enchev so we're grouping by location we know the appointments have speakers, but we can't quite tell which appointments have which speakers, which of course, you know, you could do a template modification, or you can use our handy filtering dropdown. So we want to see everything that's Enchev and nothing updated, which is my handy way of knowing that I forgot to do one simple thing in our XAML, because we have selected resource bound to our combo box, but we got to make sure that mode is two-way. Otherwise, all our changes are not being filtered back to the view model. So now we're going to get a lot closer to our intended result. So once again, we can go through, move some appointments, set our speaker resource. We'll do a one for each of these. Last one will be Donchev. And now when we go and modify everything in the combo box, we're going to see this is just the Enchev appointments, just the Milev appointment, and just the Donchev appointments. Or I can go ahead and clear, and we see all our appointments now in the unfiltered mode of Rad Schedule View. So I hope you can see how with a little bit of work, you can add some really powerful resource filtering to Rad Schedule View to make it an even more compelling scheduling control to use in your Silverlight and WPF applications. And I hope you've enjoyed all the videos in this new Rad Schedule View series. Definitely stay tuned for more coming out in the XamilFlix series. And be sure to let us know if there's something that you see in the controls that we're not covering in XamilFlix. We definitely want to cover it for you and help make new resources to help further your Solar and WPF development. So definitely let us know what you like and stay tuned for more.